What is going on, Misfit Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Misfit Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, Matt the Misfit. This is your AEW All-In Review for August the 27th, 2023. The inaugural uh, All-In for AEW, but the second overall All-In show. And will not be the last, because we found out at the end of the show uh, that they'll be back next year for Wembley Stadium, August 25th, I believe. But we'll talk about that. And much, much more. If you like what you see here, hit that like button. Comment down below. Hit that subscribe button as well on youtube.com slash at Misfit Wrestling Podcast. Follow the social media as Misfit Podcast TV on Twitter and Misfit Wrestling Pod on Instagram. Follow the other audio outlets, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Audible, and Pandora. As earlier today, the Pile Driver Plus went up uh, live on those platforms we talked about the unfortunate passing of bray wyatt which there was a tribute here tonight from the house of black we'll talk about that as well uh we also went over the stuff with the joshi promotion that's starting up next month with possibly mauro ranallo being the voice of that show uh we also talked about i think we talked about edge maybe possibly i don't know we know we know we went over SmackDown, Dynamite Eight. No, not Dynamite. I've already reviewed Dynamite. We went over SmackDown Collision, and Rampage, and all that stuff there. Also, the Five Star Grand Prix, uh, hey, not tapings, but the standings. Uh, there's been updates to those standings that I will talk about this coming weekend. For when I get to the Stardom show, which I'm going to talk about or uh, reviewed on next Sunday. But uh, there are some unfortunate things that happened uh, regarding CM Punk because he just cannot help himself. Uh, CM Punk and Jungle Boy Jack Perry got into an altercation uh, before Punk went out for his match with Samojo on the main card before All In today. Uh here is what Fightful Select I do put out there for Jungle Boy Jack Perry and CM Punk. CM Punk and Jack Perry had an altercation backstage at AEW's All In. A few details are far and far. There, the details are few and far between the the moment. But we've learned that Jack Perry and CM Punk had an altercation shortly before. CM Punk went out to the ring for his match with with Samoa Joe. Uh, Jack Perry was on right before him on the Zero Hour. Did a spot on a car window and said, Real glass, cry me a river. This was a shot at CM Punk, uh, who had confrontation had a had a confrontation with uh, Jung, uh, Jack Perry at an AEW collision taping this summer over Pe- Jack Perry's insistent on using real glass for a dumb spot on the show we we're told that uh, per- uh jack perry wasn't happy with how the situation was relayed publicly by those close to cm punk we have learned the following regards regarding punk side of things which claims that jack perry approached punk backstage and, and stepped in his face and bumped punk Punk was said to have then pushed Perry. Uh, Perry allegedly came at Punk and got choked out or choked or whatever. Uh, we haven't heard of a particular kind of choke or who broke things up, but uh, please note this is only one side of the story. More details will emerge. Miro said on Twitter uh, that the claim claim the punk side of the story was fake and untrue. Other versions allege that punk threw the threw a punch and punk stepped to uh, Jack Perry first. Other accounts claim that punk uh uh and it was it was I bas- basically started things, I guess. They exchanged words. Punk got in uh, Jack Perry's face and pie f- faced him. Punk allegedly grabbed uh, 
Perry in a front uh, front face lock, and it was broke up. PW Insider reported that Jack Perry was sent away from the venue and CM Punk was at Wembley for a time. Eventually, Punk was asked to leave. Wrestling Observer claims that they were both removed by security. We've reached out to both Punk, CM Punk and Jack Perry for their, for, for their sides to clear up a, a misconception regarding the prior argument and uh, Perry not wanting to come to work the next week. We're told he had pre-planned uh, an approved vacation or whatever. Uh, Tony Khan confirmed the altercation and said the investigation was ongoing. What the fuck is going on here? We we why would you have a altercation at a show like this in front of eighty one that what was eighty one thousand the exact the exact uh eighty one thousand uh thirty five fans in attendance paid attendance and you're gonna pull this shit. Look, I don't know who's on whose side is which is right. If the idea is that, first of all, Jungle Boy Jack Perry is a fucking idiot for even saying anything in the first place. Uh, knowing CM Punk has a problem, had a problem with it a few weeks ago, or was it last month or something like that. And then you're going to say that shit, knowing you're probably going to get your ass kicked. You just don't say anything. Now, if Punk started it, then fuck CM Punk for that. But if Jungle Boy started the whole thing, then fuck him too. Two wrongs don't make right. Uh, if the situation was... Uh, well, either way, it's not a good look for anything. Uh, we got all out next week. Alright, this coming Sunday, rather, this upcoming Sunday. Uh, whether or not CM Punk is going to be there or not, we, we don't know. As far as we know, no one's been suspended. Uh, I don't, it's, and I've seen people online saying, oh, it's brought out over again. Like, no, it's it, it's not. A brawl out was way worse than this. It's still bad. It's still a bad look for the company, but it's not as nowhere as bad as what happened with the whole brawl, I think. Jungle Boy, or not Jungle Boy, CM Punk didn't go go on to fucking social media after this and say, Jungle Boy, Jack Perry is a piece of shit. He's a dumb-headed fuck and anything like that. He didn't say anything like that. He didn't bury him. He didn't go back to burying the AEW roster. Uh, he just got offended with what was said, which really was stupid in the first place. Um... I don't even think Punk cared that much about the following it. But the fact that it was said on national television or during this show, free by the, it was it, like the zero hour was free on YouTube. And the fact that he said this, uh, knowing Punk wasn't going on next, was, it was a dumb thing to do. Uh, for either side, really. Do not egg on things and, and believe me i believe this is not the first time I've, I've heard stories that jack perry has had issues before um i believe he's had i've i've heard like issues i've heard issues before about this before like he's had some he's had some like backstage problems before and it's not the first time. It probably won't be the last. Um, but, uh, you know, just don't egg, just don't egg on CM Punk. That's, that's all you gotta do. Just don't say anything to him. Um, but I do know this: that now Jungle Boy will be banned from a collision because if you don't, if CM Punk doesn't like you, you're not gonna be banned. For, you're not gonna be on the uh, on that show ever again. Uh, Miro might be bad from collision. <laughs> Who knows? But this whole thing was kind of dumb. Um, like, I you know, and I don't think we're gonna hear much. Like, I listen, listen. I know everybody keeps talking about the the, the brawl out thing. I think brawl out is gonna be talked about. It will be talked about more than this. It will be uh, because like no chairs were thrown. Um. 
Punk really, as far as I understand, Punk never actually said like anything bad about Jungle Boy, like ever. All he really did uh, was tell uh, Jack that you know the gla- real the real glass bot doing a real glass using real glass for a segment is stupid and irresponsible. If you want to use real glass, go to Wednesday nights. He didn't shit on him. He didn't call him a fucking idiot. Well, I mean, technically, that's what it would sound like. He's a, he is, you know, at this point. But come on. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Uh, of all nights, you're going to pull that shit. And I don't think CM Punk, and I've seen, I've seen fucking idiots on chat rooms, on, on, on podcasts, and shit during the during their watch along say dumb shit like oh well cm punk is the starter like do you are you really honestly think cm punk went to the show and woke up the deck the day of the show and said hey you know what i'm gonna go to go to wembley stadium and during the show i'm gonna cause a little drama no this the whole fight only started because it's fucking what's his name Said the stupid shit on during his match that he really shouldn't have never said. Never should have ever said said. Oh, real glass, uh, uh, cry me a river. Just don't say it, and you won't get fucking eaten out by fucking people. CM Punk wouldn't have wanted to kick your ass for it. It's not that fucking hard to do. Just shut the fuck up and move on. But I am moving on. From another, from uh, a topic that's kind of, it's really stupid to talk about. I'm tired of talking about uh, all elementary wrestling, um, or all elite elementary, as Silver Monster would put it. Uh, but uh, two new things were announced for uh, the coming weeks. Uh, after All Out, we did find out two matches were actually made official for All Out uh, following the show. Oh. Uh, Kenny Omega will take on Konosuke Takeshita. Uh, and also, uh, M- John Moxley will challenge the winner of Wednesday's All Atlantic Championship match between Penta uh, Gon Jr. or Penta Zero, Zero Miata, whatever you want to call him. Or Penta, just call him Penta. And the champion, Orange Cassidy, the winner of that match will defend their, the title against M- Moxley at All Out. Uh, so that should be a lot of fun. It's obviously going to be Moxley and uh, Orange Cassidy. It was probably going to be something with Pack, but Pack is, I guess, injured again. So uh, again, Speedy recovered a Pack. Uh, so there's that. Uh, we did find out uh, that Full Gear, Full Gear, will take place officially on Saturday. Uh, November 18th from the Kia Forum Forum for Full Gear. That was that was a show that was announced well, originally. Well, it was actually the show was actually reported to take place by Fightful Select, uh, but was it made official by uh, Tony Khan during the media scrum, as well as a new pay per view on October the first, the one year anniversary of the passing of the legendary. Uh, Antonio Noki, a uh, founder of New Japan Pro Wrestling, called Russell Dream, which will take place at the Climate uh, Pledge Arena on October the 1st, 2023 in Seattle, Washington. That's going to be taking place, I believe, the day after uh, AEW t- goes f- takes place for, let me see if I can find it here. It's in here somewhere. For a collision, uh, which will have the show on October the first will uh, feature New Japan talent, so it's gonna be so it's gonna be it's gonna be like a mini Forbidden Door, but in September, in October. So that should be a lot of fun here. Uh, maybe that's what they'll do. And I, I I don't want them to do Omega or not Omega. I don't want them to do. Well, actually, I wouldn't want them to waste Omega Osprey there either if they're gonna keep it for Tokyo Dome. But I personally would not waste Brian and Okada at this show. 
if it, the Okada Brian should happen in the Tokyo Dome, uh, which I think is going to be planned. Match I would actually do on the show, and that's just me you know, spitballing here. And this, I'd agree, I actually agree with Solo Monster. Do Kenny and Okada. Uh, do Kenny and Okada, then you can bring in the actual LIJ. You can bring in Naito, Shingo, and Hiromu. Or if you want to do Shingo, Yota, and you bring out. Bring in, Yota doesn't want to do it yet. Come to AW yet. So just do Shingo. Give me the match that we should have gotten it all out, or not all out, for Bindor, which is Shingo, Hiromu, and uh, Naito versus Malachi Black, Brody King, and Buddy Matthews in a trios match. Uh, or, or give me a singles match between Naito and Malachi Black or something like that. Or... Give me a match because I still want to see Brody King and, and Shingo Takagi beat the shit out of each other. That's a match I want to see. Um, but those are some of the things that were uh, announced for after All Out. Uh, Mercedes Monet, uh, who, in my opinion, should not come to AEW, not because I don't want her there. It's because the booking doesn't, she doesn't, the booking doesn't deserve her being around the company because it's not going to get better with the, the, that, that that division will not get better with her there and anybody keeps anybody still think that's going to happen is a fucking idiot uh nothing will change with her as not champion as being a part of the company in some way or shape or form julia as much as i love julia julia coming in is not going to change the complexion of the women's division in AEW. Uh though I believe when it, when is that a uh, New Japan Las Vegas show? Um let's see. October the 28th. So when is Okay, so okay, so okay. Yeah, no, she would probably wouldn't make it. Maybe. No, she wouldn't be on she wouldn't be able to make that show. So I was thinking about that. That I remembered the finals of the, of the five stars. That Saint is the is the is the day of, is that th- that Saturday, and she won't be able to make that show, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I don't think. Yeah, no, no Stardom show. Yeah, no Stardom wrestlers are unfortunately going to be on that show either. Uh, maybe, unless unless because that all depends on where Julia stands in the five star. You know. But as of right now, she may not be on that show. I mean, I personally would like to see her wrestle on that show, or have her wrestle Tony Storm or or somebody like that. Uh, but uh, you know, who knows? But uh, but yeah. All right, AEW all out or not all out, all in. I gotta get. I'm, I'm I'm gonna be so fucking tired this week, this coming week. I got Raw tomorrow. Wednesday got dynamite the go home show again another go home show for that show for for Ben uh, for Bindar uh, all out Smackdown the go by the way I just remember you guys there's two go home shows coming there's actually three of three technically three or four technically technically you have Raw and Smackdown the go home shows for Saturday's pay per view which is a uh, payback um, which I just remembered. I don't think that do I have collision set for that for that coming week? I don't think I don't think I do. I don't think I do. Hold on, let me let me see. No, I don't. So I I have no plans to do okay. I can't remember if I was doing collision next week or not. So yeah, so you get the two the raw and smackdown, the two go home shows for payback, then you get the Saturday show, which is payback. Uh and then you got Dynamite. The go home show for all out. Uh, it's gonna be. I'm gonna be. So, I'm gonna be probably dead at the end of the week. <laughs> We're dead ass tired from all this stuff here. But uh, but alas, the zero hour show looked amazing. By the way, the 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 visual of just this about of the of the battle fans that were in attendance for the show. Oh my god, the show was wow. Um. Though Renee Paquette opened up with a line from uh, Bray Wyatt, uh, if we can find the quote here, uh, one of Bray Wyatt's 
last uh, tweet, I believe. It was either a tweet or a... Uh, it was either a tweet or a... I don't remember exactly what it was. Well, I can't remember if it was a tweet or not. But uh, here is what Renee Paquette had said. Uh, she said, Wrestling is not a love story. It's a fairy tale for masochists. Uh, a comedy for people who criticize punchlines. A, a fantasy most can't understand. A spectacle no one can deny. Uh, that was a tweet. I, but I think that was a tweet from, from uh, Bray Wyatt. Back in, hmm, back in, I was it before or after he returned? It was one of the two. It might have been after he returned or before he returned. I'm not sure. Anywho, that's how that the whole thing started here. Zero Hour kicked up with Ozzy Open defending their Ring of Honor tag team titles against AEW World Champion MJF and his challenger for the main event, Adam Cole. Uh, Ozzy Open. Attacked MJF before the match to, uh, even started. After the bell ring, Ozzy Open took charge and restricted MJF from tagging in Cole. Uh, MJF eventually tagged in Cole. Uh, Fletcher and David, uh, Mark, da Mark Davis, rather, uh, regained control moments later. MJF landed the kangaroo kick, which got a fucking massive pop from the London crowd, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, MJF. Delivered a MJF and Cole delivered their double clause line pinned Kyle Fletcher to win the Ring of Honor tag team titles, making Adam Cole a triple crown winner in Ring of Honor, being the being also held uh, the Ring of Honor World Championship for uh, three times and the Ring of Honor television. I believe he was a Ring of Honor television champion. Let me find out. Yes, so he is a triple crown winner here. Like I said, three time Ring of Honor World Champion. Uh, one time world television champion and the current now current ring of honor uh, tag team champions. If he were to win the pure championship uh, eventually down the road against uh, which I would love to see by, by the way, him versus uh, Shibata, that'd be amazing. Uh, he would become a grand slam champion. But yeah, you know, I don't have a problem with this. Uh, it, fears, it, fears, it fuels the speculation which happened in the main event here. Um, I don't think this this tag team title run is going to last very long either because uh, I think uh, I, they're probably going to drop the tag titles to uh, the kingdom. So, yeah. Uh, then we had... Uh, we see, see Mercedes Monet sitting in the crowd here. They They... Said she was there multiple times throughout the night here. Uh, AW Women's Championship matches preview for the show. Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, was uh, interviewed. Then we had Jungle Boy, Jack Perry, uh, defending the FTW Championship against Hook. Hook wins. Don't need to talk about this anymore because uh, it's going to rage me to talk about the other shit, and I don't want to talk about that. Uh, uh, but Hook re wins back the TNT Championship. I don't think DJ, but FTW title. I think he him and his dad, the only two people to ever hold that title twice. Uh, I personally would have, I, I still would retire the championship if I'm being honest there. Uh, the main show opened up with CM Punk defending the quote unquote war, real world championship against the Ring of Honor television champion. C, uh, I must have CM Punk. Samoa Joe. This match was actually really good. I enjoyed this match. Uh, these two, I have. Great chemistry. These two always have great chemistry with each other here. Uh, Joe backed Punk into a corner after a lockup. Uh, when this match started, by the way, the crowd popped because they're we're, they're witnessing. By the way, I want to I wanted to say this. This is pretty cool here too because um, how look how far these two have come with this rivalry here. Like these two used to wrestle in, in front of like fifty people against each other 50 people maybe 100 people 150 people in ring of honor uh back in the day during their huge rivalry and from going from that to wrestling in front of 81,000 people at wembley stadium is just incredible i think that's pretty cool here but joe backed up punk into the corner after a lock up uh punk responded by uh packing uh, backing joe into the into the opposite corner uh, 
Punk applied a headlock on Joe. The action briefly spilled onto the out floor. Uh, at one point, Punk decided went to do the uh, the spinning toe hold uh, thing that Terry Funk used to do, which was a nice nod to Terry Funk. Uh, Joe delivered uh, several traps to Punk uh, back inside the uh, back inside the ring. Punk sent Joe out to the ring. Joe moved out of the way. Punk leaped over the top ropes. Uh, Joe then smashed the CM Punk into the announce table. Uh, Punk immediately the show the show just started and we've already seen blood on the show. Uh, Punk is busted open. Uh, Joe then continues to punch uh, Punk in the ring. Uh, Punk uh, was able to wiggle uh, wiggle his way out of the muscle buster attempt. Sent Joe into sent down Joe down with a kick. Punk then began to re- building up some momentum. Uh, Joe stopped him in his tracks. Moments later, uh, Joe locked in the crossface the uh care not the care food clutch the coquina clutch no it's no actually you know, excuse me it's just a regular crossface i don't know why i thought coquina clutch for some reason <laughs> i don't know where the hell that came from uh punk then reversed the the hold into a cover punk uh, obviously got a two count there punk sent joe down with kick uh joe once got got in control of the match again punk uh bit joe on the top turnbuckle landed a Pepsi plunge for the win. Uh, it popped to me because I love because you know you don't see Punk hit the Pepsi plunge often, but the fact that he won the match with it, which he rarely does, I believe that used to be his finisher in Ring of Honor. Oh, excuse me, I hit the microphone there for a second. I didn't see that coming as at the finish. I thought they were going to try to do this GTS again or maybe the I uh, Anaconda Vice, but no. Uh, Punk retains the quote-unquote real world championship, and he probably uh, also bit Jungle Boy Jack Perry backstage after the match. I don't know. Um, so there's that. Next up, we got the Golden Elite, Kenny Omega, Kota Ibushi, Hangman Adam Page taking a Bullet Club Gold G- Switchblade, Jay White, Juice Robinson with their partner, Kodosuke Takeshita with the, with the guns, and uh, the carny piece of shit known as Don Callis. Uh, this match was a lot of fun. I know a lot of people are down with down on them not being Kota Bushi not showcasing what he does here. Uh, well, he's not. Let him give him a one on one match first. Uh, I'll talk. I'll, I'll talk about my whole stance on the whole Abushi thing in a second here. But uh, Juice Robinson and Hangman Page to begin the match here. By the way, I do think it's funny that after the Punk match, they just sent out the elites. Uh, the members of the elite just have their matches over with. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. Uh, so, like I said, Juice Robinson and Hangman Page started the match off. Page sent Robinson down uh, with a shoulder tackle. Page connected with the big boot, tagged Omega in. Uh, Kenny, Omega, and Hangman Page briefly worked together, tagged in Ibushi. Robinson backed off, tagged in Jay J- White. Little, little, about to relive some, a little bit of New Japan Pro Wrestling history. Remember, guys. Uh, last year, no, it wasn't last year. How many years ago was it? Russell Kingdom's fourth? No. What year was it? It was 2020. I'm trying to remember which, which Russell Kingdom that was. Was it Russell Kingdom 16? No, Russell. Look here. Russell Kingdom. Where? What year was that? Kingdom 2020. Wrestle Kingdom 14, that's right. In that sh- on that show, night one uh, main event, I believe, was the IWGP World Championship match, I believe. No, it wasn't actually. No, nope. I'm, I'm, oh no, it was on night two. It was just a regular match. It was, it was Jay White defeated Kota Ibushi in that ma- in the match that night, and I believe the following year, uh, Ibushi, we had the night, we had the night two thing. The main event of that show was the IWGP unification match. Or not the unification match, the double championship match where Kota Ibushi, uh successfully retained the championships against Jay White. So there's a lot of history here. Uh, and it's nice to see Jay White and, and Kota Ibushi back into the ring together here. Uh, Jay White got in, got in Ibushi's face. Uh, Jay White sent Ibushi down with a shoulder tackle. Ibushi immediately got up. Uh, White 
struck Abushi with the draw in, in uh, struck Abushi in the jaw several times. Abushi knocked down Switchblade. Uh, or knock Switchblade down with one hit because Murdo Abushi decides to want to play a little bit here. Uh, Abushi tagged in Omega. Omega and, uh, and Kota Abushi, the Golden Lovers, start working together here. Uh, Omega sent Takesha and Robinson to the floor. Omega did the Terminator dive over the top rope, took out uh, Takesha and Jay White. Uh, Jay White then took control of uh, as Omega returned to the ring. Bullet Club Gold and, and uh, Takesha traded tags. Ibushi entered the ring, fought Kanosuke and Takesha, which I would love to see a one-on-one match between those two. Takesha. Te- uh, Te- uh, I, I, I don't know why I was trying to say Kenny Omega and, and Kanosuke and Takesha at the same time, and I was trying to say Kanesha. <laughs> Ooh, a long night. Long day, actually, here. Takesha Te- took out Omega or took down Omega in the center of the ring. Uh, Kanosuke Takesha then jack, tagged in Jay White. Uh, Rob, Juice Robinson was tagged in next. Juice attempted a cover on Omega. The cleaner prevented that from happening. Uh, or the cleaner uh, was prevented from tagging his his ta- uh, partners by uh, Juice Robinson in the guns because uh, they just Got involved. I guess the referee was licking, I guess. I don't know. Omega eventually tagging the hangman. Uh, hangman built some mo- up some momentum. Uh, hangman went for the pin attempt on Jay White after landing a clothesline from the top rope. Uh, Ibushi tagged himself in. Ibushi uh, uh, went, sent Jay White down. Takesha tag, uh, broke up the uh, Ibushi's cover. Omega and Ibushi dived to the floor. Omega, Ibushi, and Hangman. Uh, fought Jay White together inside the ring while uh, Jay, White, Jay White then kicked out of Ibushi's uh, bridge cover. His, uh, I believe it's his German suplex that he does, which he, looks beautiful all the time. Jay White tagged in Takesha moments later. Omega went and Takesha went back and forth. Uh, Omega took out Jay White and Juice Robinson. Takesha attempted to pin after landing a blue thunder bomb, which one of my favorite moves, by the way. I wish, I wish, I wish Sami Zayn would use the Blue Thunder Bomb as a finisher instead of the Hulva Kick. That's just me. Uh, Omega went for the pin after connecting uh, with the Poison Rana and Takesha. P- Hangman and Omega worked over Takesha. Not Hangman knocked down the guns uh, on the apron. Uh, Arthur a- apron, rather. Page then dived through the floor to wipe them out. Uh, Takesha landed a jumping knee on a Bushi. Uh, Page then connected with, with a buckshot layered on Takesha. Or Page, yeah, Page, yeah, I was correct. Buckshot layered on Takesha by Hangman Page. Omega landed a big knee on Jay White, the fuck you Jay White knee, as I like to call it. Or he's also dubbed it as well, which is, I think it's funny. Uh, and Juice Robinson. Uh, Takesha then caught. Omega up with a roll, roll up and got the pin for his win, for uh, pick up the win for his team. Uh, and Bullet Club, Golden, and Kanosuke to guess, get the win here. This, I mean, uh, you know, obviously set up the match that was confirmed in the uh, media scrum. Kenny Omega versus Kanosuke to guess, and one on one match at All Out in Chicago. Uh, that match should be hella fun. Uh, I can't wait to see that match. But yeah, I thought this match was fine. I thought this match was decent. You know, great match. Uh, I think the people down on, on what on the showing of Kota Ibushi. Look, you don't get to showcase a lot of stuff when you're doing a trios match. Uh, and I get it. People were mad about Kenny Omega not being uh, doing a, a singles match in front of eighty thousand something people. Uh, Whatever. Uh, the rumor is Kenny Omega is the only one with some type of injury, and they don't want to, you know, risk him getting injured more during this match. Does that, and that way they don't lose the singles match at all out. So that's what that happened here, guys. If you want your uh, fix on Abushi as a singles wrestler, just sign up for 
uh, New Japan a world, NJPW or New Japan Pro Wrestling World, whatever you want to call it, and go watch go go watch the Bushi matches, man. Go watch his match with the match that got me into New Japan. Like not it, not it didn't get me into New Japan Pro Wrestling. I I've, I've watched New Japan match New Japan Wrestling matches every now and then, but I didn't start watching New Japan. Not I would say regularly, but like more. Until I seen Omega, not Omega, uh, Ibushi and Shinsuke Nakamura tear the house down at Wrestle Kingdom Nine, and then I believe was it was it a year later Wrestle Kingdom Ten? I believe was that was that the year that the Ubu, Ibushi and uh, no, it wasn't. Was Ibushi on that show? Who did Ibushi wrestle on that show? Eh, no, he did not. Did he not wrestle on this show? Was he out with an injury or something? I'm trying. He does not look like he wrestled on this show. Huh. This might be the one, the one of the times Ibushi was out with injury, but he he was he didn't seem like he was on this show here. It's just fucking odd. Let me see. Um, all right, so Naito was on the show. Shibata was on the show. Ishii was and AJ Styles, Nakamura, Okada. Uh, so there's that. There were, there are some Okada matches I would I encourage you guys to watch too. Uh, like like the following year, it was like who was it? Bushi didn't wrestle on the show either. What? Interesting. 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 Oh no, Abushi did technically Abushi did wrestle on the show here. He went under the Tiger Mask W thing. He took on uh, who did he wrestle on the show here? Uh, uh, a A A C H under the tiger the, that was to promote the uh the what was the what was the show that they did? What was the show? Tiger Mask W uh wrestling show uh anime thing. But other matches you can check out from Koto Bushi on New Japan's thing. The uh, IWGP Intercontinental Championship match from the G1 Supercard against Tetsu Naito. Uh, also, there's a Nabushi match with B-Ball Mike Bailey at, at Bloodsport earlier this year. Was it earlier this year or was it last year? It was something like that. Uh, Cruiserweight Classic matches. The matches. The match with Buddy Murphy. The match with uh, on NXT. The match with uh, Cedric Alexander. And the match with Brian Kendrick and uh, in the finals, I think it was the finals, or it was the semifinals. Who who did he wrestle? Was it was it Zack Saber Junior that he wrestled? Let me look here. Cruiserweight Classic. I know he wrestled somebody in that in that semifinals here. Uh, no, he wrestles T.J. Perkins. Zack Saber Junior wrestled Grand Metal League. So okay, never mind. Uh, <laughs> I could I could not. Remember the other match that he had here, uh, but but you know, do that. You know, uh, if you want your that's if you want your fix on Kota Ibushi. Uh, so FTR defended the I missed the Ring of Honor tag titles, the AEW tag titles against the Young Bucks. Uh, this match was I listen. I know a lot of people said this was a match of night. I don't agree. Personally, um, because I personally, I thought the, I thought the main event was the match of the night, uh, but this is, this is just as good. Uh, you know, uh, both teams went back and forth here. Young know, Bucks sent a Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler out in the ring, uh, by the way, uh, FTR were wearing uh, arm brands for Jay Briscoe, Brody Lee, and Bray Wyatt, uh, which was nice to see. At one point, Cash Wheeler uh, fought and attempted a tag to tag in Cash, uh, not Cash Wheeler, Dax Harwood. Bucks have briefly gained, uh, gained, regained control of the match, uh, and then at some point, Nick Jackson delivered a superplex to uh, for to I'm gonna say Cash Harwood. Dax Harwood from the top rope. Uh, Matt Jackson and Cash Wheeler, uh, those follow-ups were then blocked. Uh, Dax Harwood attempted to 
a pin after a FTR connected with a spike, spike pile driver on Nick Jackson. Uh, the Young Bucks then connected with super kicks on Dax Harwood. Harwood was able to kick out of a cover after being driven into the canvas. Nick Jackson wiped out uh, Cash Wheeler on the floor uh, at some point here. Uh, the Young Bucks then went for a cover after connecting the BTE trigger on Dax Harwood. The Bucks connected with the shattering machine on Harwood, which I didn't see that coming. Kicked out of, uh, out of that. Wheeler kicked out of the BTE trigger. FTR then retained the gold after delivering a shatter machine to Nick Jackson. Uh, I was not that surprised that FTR, because I said whoever wins this match, it didn't matter who wins this match to me. They were going to be dra- they're going to be dropping the tag titles to Jay White and Juice Robinson at All Out. Uh, that's who. That's who. If I'm being honest, that's who they are waiting on, uh, or that's who's waiting for the AEW Tag Team Champions following All In, which is Switchblade Jay White and Juice Robinson. So there is that. But I actually dubbed the Terry Funk. Stampede death match because this is the actual Terry Funk tribute match here. Uh, like this was all over the place here. At one point, like uh, Moxley got stuck with sticks in his head, uh, a skewers as they call it, as Penta did all that stuff. Attempted to cover Kingston and Claudio, who hate each other, are shown brawling up to lever up. To the upper levels of the Wembley Stadium. Penta was driven into a chair. Immediately called. Referee immediately called for help. Uh, Penta was escorted to the back air. Uh, Orange Cassidy uh, gently did his kicks to Moxley. In the middle of the ring. Moxley pulled out a fork and stuck it in. Uh, struck it with Orange Cassidy. Got the Usyk fuck chance as always. Yura and uh, Taylor. Who the fuck is Taylor? Oh, Chuck Taylor. <laughs> I'm so tired. I, I I wrote these notes down. I was like, what? <laughs> oh, man. Chuck Taylor was, was, was brawling into the parking lot. Really, you didn't. Chuck Taylor appeared at the upper levels moments later. Eddie King took out a member of the security in the bar. Santana and Ortiz. I uh, sent uh, Trent Beretta into a ladder in the corner. By the way, AEW should just bring their own ladders next time because, uh, you know, at one point, uh, Penta came back and they tried to use the ladder. I don't know who else was on the ladder. Who was it? Was it Penta and, because they had tables set up, and I can't remember who it was, who else was there. It was Penta and, who the fuck else was grabbing, was climbing the ladder? Uh, who was it? Penta came through. It was, it was Santana. So Santana and Penta were on the ladder. And the ladder was like, I don't work for me, bruv. Uh, and collapsed. Just don't bring your own ladders, AEW. That's what WWE does. They never bring, they bring their own ladders. Because they know they can handle it. Uh, but uh, again, this match is all over the place. Uh, unfortunately, Moxley did not bring his chainsaw that was gifted to him by terry funk back in 2016 uh however however uh moxley did bring uh the barbed wire bat i believe at one point uh that mcfoley gifted him uh i did get i somewhat got my wish uh because i tweeted out i hope somebody from this match brings a branding iron iron to the batch and distribute to Mick Foley. Somebody did, and I don't, I think it was Moxley, but they never actually attempted to use it, which is lame. But Orange Cassidy uh, rubbed his hand in in sugar glass, Jack Perry. Fake, fake glass, by the way. Moxley stopped him in his tracks, uh, and at one point, Andy Kingston didn't come. Uh, well, Moxley was driven into the glass. Uh, Claudio takes that. Orange Cassidy. Eddie Kingston heads down to the ring with steel chair. Kingston 
Zip Moxley threw a wooden board in the corner. I think that actually had barbed wire on it. I'm not sure. At Orange Cassidy then landed an orange punch with a, uh, covered in, in, in glass on the uh, Konosuke. Uh, Claudio for the win and best friends, Orange Cassidy, Eddie Kingston, and Pentagon get the win here. This was chaotic. This was the... The match, the, 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 this is a hardcore match, WWE. This is what you have as advertised. This is how you advertise a hardcore match and to deliver. What WWE did on SmackDown was not a fucking hardcore match. You, you're not going to call it a Terry Funk tag team hardcore match, and then the only bit of hardcore that was involved in the match is one table spot. Here you had fucking them going all over the place, glass involved, barbed wire involved, Somebody, Moxley brought on a branding iron, a ch- steel chair, and some other foreign objects. The skewer, I think it may have been a screwdriver attempt. Uh, I'm going to assume, assume these are UK tables that they, they use, the UK ladders that uh, don't really give a shit about anybody, which I thought was funny. So, you know, but I thought this was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, uh, so, yeah, I got that just a little fun here. I should probably rate, uh, rate these matches, but, you know, who knows? Now, let's talk about a match that enraged me, irritated the shit out of me. And I and, and I mean this in the most positive way, well, not in the, positive, in the most nicest way of all. Uh, the match was not bad, but it wasn't not great. And I keep, and, I, and every time I see people saying, oh, it's a great four-way, I'm like, it was a fantastic four-way. I'm like, no, it, it it was, it was not fantastic, but it wasn't bad. It was Akari Shida defending her AEW Women's Championship against Tony Storm, who had her, her her Titantron video package thing, which is fantastic. I love the character she, she, she's portraying here. Her uh, 1950s uh, Karen, like, losing her mind character, and it's fucking great. I love it. Soraya and Dr. Per Baker. Uh, Soraya unfortunately got the hometown reaction because, uh, uh, because, because, and I had a feeling this was going to happen. This show, again, this match was not bad. It just was not great. My issue comes with how they, who the finish. So the finish came here. Uh, so the crowd, I, 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 to me, I think I would have popped. I may have been the one of the only few people that popped for Tony Storm. Uh, slapping the shit out of Soraya and then slapping the shit out of Ruby Soho. And I was like, good. She doesn't need the outcast. She's way much better than this. Um, What was I going to say here? Where was I going with that? Oh, uh, so I, I mentioned that stuff here. Uh, okay. So I hate the lockjaw. I fucking hate that maneuver. Because no one... Those apparently no one who has this does who gets this move applied onto them knows that they have a mouth. See, see if I if I'm getting this move put on me, I'm either having my mouth shut, uh, where and my teeth showing where you can't you know enter have the fingers enter my 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 gullet, or. The most logical thing when you're in this fucking maneuver, bite the fucking fingers to escape. And this fucking idiot named Britt Baker decides that, hey, I'm going to keep this move on, right? She's going to keep this move on. Soraya gets into the ring, sprays Tony Storm with the spray can, and hits her rampage move whatever the fuck she calls it nowadays and pins tony storm to win the championship meanwhile again this idiot and i say this very loosely because she dumb baby face syndrome here decides to keep the luck jaw on not letting go of it not even attempted to stop the pinfall she just lets it happen what? And then, and then, and then on top of that, Sheeta loses the championship. After 34 days 
ago putting the title on her. So, if you're telling me this whole time the story was to build dissension between the outcasts during this match, why the fuck wasn't Tony Storm the champion going into the show? I love Hikari Shida. I love Tony Storm. That is about it when it comes to those people in this match here. If that was the plan all along, Tony Storm should have been the champion going to the show. It made no fucking sense to take the title off Tony Storm, put it on Shida, to do a storyline going into that show, and her pin the, the person that wasn't even the champion. To, for the storyline that involved somebody who she pinned that had, didn't even have the title anymore. This would have made a lot more sense if, I don't know, Tony Storm actually had retained the championship a few weeks ago, 34 days ago, against Sheeta. And I'm sorry, Sheeta deserves a longer reign. How are you going to treat your longest reigning women's champion during your most difficult time of the year? Not difficult time of the year, but the most difficult time in wrestling during the pandemic only to have her lose it 34 days fucking later. That shit infuriated me. How this just proves, and, and, and again, I keep throwing this out here. Don't, don't wait on Mercedes Monet getting here because th like that's going to save anything. Because y'all said the same shit about Zarea coming in here. And you said the same fucking shit about, uh, uh, who, who else was it? Who else is it? Ruby Soho, maybe? I don't know. Probably not. Y'all said it about Soraya coming in and saying, oh, well, we're going to fix this division. I didn't fix a goddamn thing. They even brought in a Madison Rain. Still had not fixed a goddamn thing. Why? Because the person who is still bucking the show thinks he knows things. Just give that, just get the women's division pencil to Marina, not Marina, Maria Canellis. I'm just saying, I, I, I'm just saying, I, I'm, just, I'm just throwing it out there. Just throwing it out there. And we, I know, I, I'm not very happy with Rosie O'Gallo right now. Uh, because they had fucking the British Barbie, as we call, uh, as I like to call her. Uh, defeat Momo Watanabe last night. Uh, went losing her losing streak for no reason, by the way. Don't get me started with that. I will. I'm gonna rant on that this, this coming week. Don't you fucking worry, because I'm worried that now, because Momo should beat Uta. We'll talk. About, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't gonna worry about that right now. But my point is, that was stupid. That was utter bullshit. The wrong person won. I don't give a flying fuck that this was in the UK. Just because you're in the UK doesn't mean you fucking deserve to win the title. This woman has only wrestled eight matches in AEW and is now the champion. So you need to tell me that you can only that you it's okay to wrestle only eight matches and now win the championship. At least when CM Punk won the title, he before that was wrestling every week. It's not my fault you you signed on for a a contract that allows you to wrestle only monthly. You you wrestle less than Sting, and let's look at Sting's fucking. Let's look at Sting's uh, uh, standings right now. Let's look at how many wrestlers, uh, not wrestlers, wrestling matches Sting has had in AEW. No singles matches, by the way. We're looking at tag team matches uh, only here. So, Men has had 19 matches in his AEW career from 2021 to 2000 to, to, to tonight, right? Hasn't lost a singles match. A single match, right? Two, two of those matches this year he had was uh, tag team and trios. We go to Soraya, right? Soraya, who came in last year, by the way, and only wrestled. Let me see. Let me look at this. This the score here again, because 
you know, oh, what's that? What is that? What is, what is that? What what is that? Eight matches? Eight? Yeah. No, I can hold on a second. Eight, nine, ten, ten, and then eleven, and then tonight, and then uh, you know, the seven, seven. Let's see, eleven matches this year. Well, before this it was ten, and she's now having eleven. When CM Punk, right? CM Punk came into AEW. Russell Darby Allen. Guess what he was doing every week after that? He had a match on Collision. This, I believe he wrestled Paras Hobbs on Collision, and then or not Collision, fucking Rampage. Because at one point it was just the the Rampage with the CM Punk show, and he was wrestling every week. And then he eventually, woman that hasn't even had look, look at her, her 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 singles record. Let's look at her singles record here, right? She's had she, she's had four sing five singles matches. She's uh, uh, and she's not really. She's only won four and lost one. CM Punk when he when he won his singles matches. Let's look at his singles matches here. Let's take let's take away. Okay, let's take away the John Moxley match. Let's take away uh, the Ricky Starks match. Or no, he lost the Ricky Starks match. Let's take away. Uh, uh, the MJ match, and let's take away who and, and Samoa, the two Samoa Joe matches. Actually, I'm not even going to worry about his what his AEW because uh, I don't fucking know at this point. Point is, it was a stupid decision by a stupid creative. I'm sorry, uh, because if you're gonna again, and I and I and I stress this. So much. If your plan was to do this whole storyline with, with the dissension of the outcast, which to me feels like a, a just a copycat of of the damage control thing, uh, which they seem to have dropped all of a sudden. Tony Storm should have been the champion going into the show here, and then and then you take the title off of Soraya and put it on Hikaru Shida at All Out. Because I'm telling you right now, if this if this was done just to have her be a transitional champion like to like Kurokara Shida, just to get a pop. This is what I do not like about about about, about certain wrestling companies there, and and credit to to uh, what the fuck is his name Triple H. He stuck to his guns and said, "No way in hell we are doing." A title change on a on a B level pay per view for a hometown pop. And he stuck to his guns and didn't go with with Sami Zayn winning the title at Elimination Chamber, and he also stuck to his guns and I had Jey Uso win the championship at SummerSlam because need because it, it neither one needed to happen. The hometown fucking you know. Pop reaction is is get, kind of gets old after a while, but oh, that infuriated me so much. Okay, so the next match here, I don't. I'm indifferent here on the result of this match here. I don't like. I don't hate it, but I also feel so bad <laughs> for a lot of people involved here. So. We have the tag team coffin match. Sting and Darby Allen defeated Swerve Strickland and Christian Cage. I did like the fact that uh, Metal, uh, what the fuck is his name? Tony Khan seemed to have bought the rights for one night for Metallica's uh, Seek and Destroy, which was one of Sting's old WCW themes in the late 2000s, early 2000s, before WCW went on under. Um, no. This match was a lot of fun. Uh, Sting at one point damaged or slammed uh, Christian Cage into a coffin. Uh, Sting placed Strickland on top of the coffin. Uh, Strickland dodged uh, uh, Darby Allen's coffin drop from the top. Sting fought off Christian and Strickland in the ring. Sting locked in Christian into a scorpion deathlock. Uh, swerve then uh, struck Sting with a chair. Uh, Christian... Low blowed Sting with a bat. 
Swerve follows that up with a double stomp of the top turnbuckles. Christian and Nana, uh, then or Prince Nana, uh, then sent uh, sent the coffin into the ring. They they were on the outside here. Christian sent Darby Allen into the barricade at ringside. Swerve then put Sting into the coffin. Uh, Strickland closed the door, but Sting's uh, moved his bat to keep it from uh, clo- uh, keep it open from closing. Sting, uh, our Strickland did sw- uh, play Sting on top of the coffin. There was nobody home when uh, Strickland went for his uh, 450 attempt from the top rope. Sting at, uh, delivered a scorpion death drop to uh, Swerve on top of the coffin. Uh, Strickland uses his hands to prevent Sting from closing the coffin after he was placed inside Darby. Landed the coffin drop on uh, to allow Sting to win to for him and Sting to win. Darby and Sting won here. Uh, this was uh, this was an, this was quite entertaining. I feel so bad for Ar Fox though, uh, not being able to perform in on in front of eighty thousand plus people. Uh, it was cool to see Swerve wrestle in front of eighty what eighty one thousand or something like that. I thought that was pretty nice here. Uh, would have loved to have seen him get the win here, but Sting and Darby, Sting doesn't lose on pay-per-view. Sting doesn't lose ever. So, you know, when Sting loses, it should be to Darby Allen or something like that. So there's that. Will Ospreay defeated Chris Jericho. Um, This was not, this isn't your typical Will Ospreay match, but this was not bad. Uh, Ospreay. Uh, got dropped on his neck on the apron by Chris Jericho. Jericho took control as the action returned to the ring. Osprey stopped uh, Jericho in, in his tracks with a kick. Uh, with a kick after a handspring on the ropes, whatever. Uh, at one point, Jericho went for the cover after landing a co- two coat breakers on, on Osprey. Then attempted to pin Osprey. After our Osprey attempted to a pin on Jericho, uh, connecting with the Nas cutter, Jericho countered Osprey and locked in the walls of Jericho. Guevara struck Osprey while the referee was occupied with Callus. Osprey managed to escape the uh, escape whatever hold they had on him. Uh, Osprey went for another cover after connecting the Spanish Fly. Jericho replied with a code break and, and an Oz cutter of his own, which is. Jericho hitting an Oz cutter just so weird to me. <laughs> uh, Osprey and Jericho exchanged blows at the center of the ring. Jericho used the used his leg to low blow uh, Osprey without the referee seeing. Uh, Osprey attempted a pin after it landed a power ball. Osprey then delivered a stormbreaker, but that was enough to put Jericho away. Uh, Scored the win after hitting a second stormbreaker. This was, like I said, your, your standard Chris Jericho match. But uh, uh, this was this okay. If I'm being honest, this was the better. This was better than the match that Jericho had with with a uh, 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 Adam Cole at Double or Nothing. If I'm being completely honest here. Uh, after the match, I believe Jericho and 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 Guevara. I guess tried to something or another, and Guevara walked off or whatever. Uh, I don't know, uh, but yeah, Osprey gets a win here at all, and as he should have, because uh, it would have been stupid if Jericho had won here. Now Joe McGinnis gets to the ring after the Jericho Osprey ma- match announces uh, eighty-one thousand uh, thirty-five fans and it paid attendance. Uh, it was pointed out that AEW All Out or All In has become a has become a new worldwide. I tend its record for any pro wrestling event, which is kudos to AEW. AEW trios match here. House Black uh, challenge are not challenged. Defended against Billy Gunn and the acclaimed. Uh, the House Black came out, which I thought was a really nice touch here. Buddy Matthews had the uh, the lantern, and I thought that was a pretty nice touch to the end of the night. Uh, let me see if I can find, let me see if I can find Buddy Matthews' tweet here. It's a, he says, Wyndham, you would be smiling above uh, watching you turn all of Wembley into the fireflies. Thank you. Uh, his legacy will live on forever, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. 
Um, and seeing the Fireflies out in Wembley was really nice. Uh, Excalibur mentioned about, you know, name, talked about Bray Wyatt on the thing. So I thought it was pretty cool. What wasn't pretty cool was the House of Black losing the tag, the trio championships. Listen, I love the acclaimed. I really do. Uh, but Billy Gunn does not need to be winning a fucking title in 2023. And I really like Billy Gunn. But this is not... What? <sighs> Look. I'm not one for fake retirements here. Okay, like... I was fine with... with, with when they did it with Mark Henry. Because no, no one saw the fake retirement coming. But, like... Billy Gunn doesn't need to be winning a championship in 2023. Like, this feud should have already been over with already. Why is it even getting another shot at the title? They lost twice to the, to the House of Black. Twice! Both at Double or Nothing and a few weeks ago on, Dino, on Collision. They did not need to... Need, what On what planet did that mean they should automatically challenge what well, where did that come from they like they said like i said they lost twice to the house of black why on why on god's green earth should they be allowed to have another match another shot at the titles please don't tell me again they did this for the pop again it's not needed i don't give a shit that it's in london the house of black should have went over the House Black should be going into all in, all out as the trios champions. And if I, and if this isn't to set up Malachi going into the singles division, because Malachi Black has not wrestled a singles match. When was the last time Malachi Black actually had a singles match? Let's look. Let's look up. Let's look up the last time Malachi Black had a singles match. Let's look. Let's look. Malachi Black's last singles match on AEW television. I'm not counting any of the, the, uh, the, what is it? Indie shows. I'm not counting his match with Kid Bandit. So I said AEW on AEW television. Malachi Black's last singles match was June 22nd, 2022, uh, AEW All Atlantic title qualifying match when he defeated. Uh, uh, Pinta to get into the match at Forbidden Door. Technically, actually, Forbidden Door last year was his last singles match. Technically. Just saying. Boy, dude needs to be in singles matches. I, I don't mind. I listen, the trios matches are great. I love House of Black as a trio or foursome because I forgot. I keep forgetting uh, Julia Hart's there. But, good Lord, just, you know, let, let Buddy Matthews and, Mal and Brody King be the tag team for a little bit and let Malachi go into the singles division here. Malachi Black could win the fucking TNT championship from Christian Cage or something. No, <laughs> I made that mistake. He loses stars as a champion. Uh, you know, whoever, who's winning? Darby Allin may actually win the title on Wednesday. Or I, I, I. And all out or whatever. Anyways, point is, if that's not what they're doing here, then the fucking House of Black should be retained here. Uh, that's that's just how I feel about that here. Main event: MJF defeated Adam Cole to retain the championship. Uh, I can't even talk about this match uh, with because I, I just can't do any justice here. Uh, we had a referee bump here. A referee got him getting beat up all the time here. Uh, he took a Panama Sunrise. Um, MJF was almost about to hit Adam Cole with the... Well, before that, we had a, a time limit draw. I think I think it was a time limit draw. Yeah, it was a time limit draw. Or a double pin and called a draw. Uh, Cole asked for five minutes. MJF denied the quest and said the champion... Uh, the, and said, uh, they're going to wrestle until they, there's, a, there's a winner in fucking in Wembley. So imagine, just imagine this match ended in a draw and then went off the air. That would have been hilarious. I, oh, man, I could have, the, the, 
the I don't want the word. What's the word I'm looking for? The reaction from the crowd and the uh, people online. Although I just the thought of seeing that was just sounds. I I like destruction. Apparently, <laughs> I'm evil. Apparently, but uh, so uh, Roderick Strong came out, came down, and low blowed the ref. Uh, not the low blowed the referee, but low blowed. Uh, MJF Cole tried to capitalize got, got a two count uh, at one point referee uh, Cole carrying back to Panama sunrise on the floor delivered attempted to do uh, deliver a Panama sunrise in the ring pulled out the diamond di, dynamite diamond ring is what I said here all that stuff here with that uh, and then we had inside cradle here from MJF to retain the championship gold after the match Adam Cole threw the ROH titles out of the ring as MJF tried to hand them to him here. It says, and calls Cole a, a fake piece of shit for using him. MJF threw the AEW title at Adam Cole and said, you know, you were you just wanted this, didn't you? Well, here, take your shot. Take this fucking thing and hit, hit me with it. Uh, and Cole just didn't want to do it. Uh, and, you know, we had... Uh, Mr. Poutman, the ex, the the ex girlfriend as of of Adam Cole here, <laughs> uh, Roderick Strong pout walked himself up the ramp. Uh, both men hugged MJF, that is, and Cole hugged after the match. Pelt them, and it was revealed at the end of the show that uh, they'll be back next year for All In uh, Three, uh, Wembley Stadium on August, I believe it's. What was it, August? I did, I believe I did say August 25th, right? I just, I want to make sure. I don't want to, yeah, August 25th, so. Yeah. So that was AEW All In. I thought the show overall was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Um, again, outside of the two deci- uh, finished decisions with Soraya winning the, the women's title, uh, ending she just run that never got even started in front of fans. I, I, that's another thing right there. Like she wins the, finally wins the title in front of fans and she never gets to have an actual run with the title in front of fans because, uh, you got to play with fucking ego backstage with Soraya because she's in her fucking hometown. Give me a fucking break with that bullshit. Fuck that. Anyway, but yeah, over, outside of that and the bullshit with that and also the bullshit with Jack Perry and CM Punk, which I'm kind of over that whole thing as well. Uh, overall, I thought All In was an enjoyable show, a very successful show. Um, can't wait to, to see what happens next for All In or All Out, rather. Uh, the updated card now for All Out is as followed. It is... Uh, Miro versus Powerhouse Hobbs. Miro may be banned from collision, so I don't know how they're gonna <laughs> they're going to uh, do that show or do that field here. Luchasaurus versus Darby Allen for the TNT Championship. Chris Antlander versus Ruby Soho for the TBS Championship. Kenny Omega versus Kanosuke Takeshita, and the winner of Orange Cassidy and the Pentagon uh, will defend the. International Championship against John Moxley on next Sunday's show. What is coming up for the rest of this week? Well, like I said, I talked about it earlier. Uh, if I can find it, let me see if I can find it. Here we go. Uh, we got, uh, which I didn't do. I didn't do Collision unfortunately this week. That was all on the Pile Driver Pulse. But we got Monday Night Raw on tomorrow. Uh, that review there. To set up whatever ma- other matches are going to be on uh, Payback, the Go Home Show for that for that show, a uh, Go Home for Dynamite for all in for all in not all in all out on Wednesday, Friday for the final SmackDown for Payback. Then we got Saturday with Payback. Sunday afternoon will be the Stardom Five Star Special in Hiroshima. Uh, that will be taking place on. On Sunday night, or Sunday morning, I will review the show on Saturday, Sunday afternoon, and then AEW's All Out. That 
same day, later that night. Uh, but yeah, I've been Matt the Misfit. This has been the Misfit Wrestling Podcast. I will see you back here for Monday Night Raw. Until then, we're out. <laughs>